Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the 12th episode from Season 4 of the Sopranos series titled Eloise. The episode first aired on December 1st, 2002. In the beginning, Uncle Junior's trial comes to a close. Bobby spots a tense juror who is wearing a wedding band in the juror's lineup. One of Junior's associates spots Danielle, one of the jurors, in a corner store with his son. Eugene walks up to Daniel and expresses his gratitude to him for quote unquote carrying out his duty as a good citizen. Eugene makes it apparent to Danielle that the mafia is aware of his identity as a juror in Uncle Junior's court case. As we catch up with little Carmine Lupertazzi, Carmine's son, he finally makes his arrival in New York. Little Carmine meets up with his father for a round of golf. As they are playing golf, Little Carmine brings up the recent difficulties the family has had with the Soprano crew in New Jersey. We see Carmine Sr. disrespects his own son in front of Johnny Sack. Carmine continues to disparage his son and ends up saying that when he first met Tony, even though Tony seemed hard-headed, he would have considered him a son. At this point, little Carmine grows envious of Carmine being able to see Tony as a son and changes his stance completely. Little Carmine switches up his position on Tony and claims that Tony has become a problem and that part of that problem is Johnny Sack's fault. As little Carmine explains, this is because Tony now sees Johnny as a friend rather than seeing him as a business associate. Carmine grows increasingly frustrated with their current conversation. We see he returns to his harsh stance and continues to seek the 40% as he originally asked for. Johnny Sack is left confused and irritated at the end of the whole interaction. In another scene, we catch up with Furio. As usual, when Furio comes over to pick up Tony from his home, he engages Carmela in yet another passionate exchange. Tony arrives in the kitchen shortly after Furio and discloses that he just purchased a surprise getaway vacation for him and Carmela as he descends down the stairs. Tony grows enraged when Carmela complains about having to rearrange her schedule to accommodate this vacation. Later, while they are driving, Tony disparages Carmela in front of Furio. We see Furio chooses to remain silent, of course. Later, Carmela heads over to Furio's home in order to speak to him about furnishing his parents' new guest house. Carmela arranges a future time to pick out decorations as they finalize their plans to go shop. Carmela ends up calling it a date. Later on, we see Polly and Silvio have a conversation about Polly's recent low earnings performance. Polly argues that his low earnings are just temporary and that he is a close friend of Tony's and that their friendship is more important to Tony than any financial reward. However, the viewer knows at this point that Tony and Silvio both seem to suspect Polly has been acting dishonestly recently. While on a trip with friends, Men Matrone, Cookie Cirilli, and Polly's mother Nucci are involved in a car accident when Min drives into another car. Polly no longer likes the idea of the ladies driving on their own and offers to drive them to their next event as a way of protecting his own mother from being driven around by Min Matron. Polly observes when Min grabs bread buns that belong to his mother Nucci while they are dining with them following the event. Additionally, Polly hears when Min says that she keeps her savings underneath her bed back at her home. As we catch up with Furio, we see he travels with Tony to a casino up in Connecticut run by Doug Smith, the Native American chief Tony worked alongside with to put an end to the Columbus Day protests in a previous season. Furio is appalled by Tony's betrayal of Carmela's as he dances with a younger escort and watches Tony as he becomes seriously drunk. One of the girls who is with him suggests a helicopter ride, and Brian Camarada, who is currently drunk, seizes the chance to fly away from the casino on the helicopter. Then we see Furio grabs Tony as he is about to pee near one of the rotating rotors of the helicopter. Furio then pushes Tony toward the spinning blade before stopping him right before touching the rotor and being taken out. Furio covers up the incident by claiming that he was attempting to pull Tony away from the rotor. Tony is groggy and hung over the next morning. We see he does not recall the near-death experience he had 
at the hands of Furio. Both Tony and Carmella are both puzzled when Furio does not come to pick up Tony as scheduled. Carmella is told by a real estate agent that Furio sold his house. Then Tony receives a call saying that Furio left New Jersey and returned home to Italy. Carmella then heads over to Furio's house and once she arrives, she looks through the window and sees Furio's empty home. This deeply affects Carmella and we see how sad she is that Furio is actually gone due to their potential romance. Remember, I am summarizing the entire series, so subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. I will be reviewing other TV shows and movies as well. Let me know what you would like me to summarize in the future in the comments section below. Doing these two things helps my channel out tremendously. I thank you for your support. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. If you can, support us on Patreon. As we catch up with Meadow, we see her and her roommates invite Carmela and Tony for dinner. Meadow has one roommate that only seems to have positive things to say about her. We see this makes Tony feel very proud and comfortable. We see Carmela is still concerned about Furio suddenly moving away. Tony is seen enjoying the dinner get together and shares a few jokes and comments that seem a bit inappropriate for Meadow's roommates. AJ shares that his teacher has been teaching that Billy Bud contains certain elements about homosexuality. Meadow's roommates accept the interpretation of AJ's teacher and they all claim that AJ's teacher is correct. Meadow's new boyfriend, Finn, also agrees that they are correct. Carmella, on the other hand, disagrees and claims that this is all part of a brainwashing agenda coming from academic institutions and backed by the media. This, of course, alienates Meadows' college-educated friends. Up to this point, as we catch up with Pauly, he feels he is not trusted by Tony and the rest of the crew. Due to this feeling of separation from Tony, Pauly visits Carmine's table at a wedding. Pauly then presents himself to Carmine in an effort to get closer to the New York family. In a previous scene, Johnny told Pauly that Carmine held Pauly in high respect. We see this was all a lie in the end, and Johnny was simply using Pauly for the information he could provide him at the time. This is made obvious when Carmine has no idea who Pauly is. Pauly falls into a panic, he walks into the bathroom and stares into the mirror, realizing he was being played by Johnny Sack all along. Pauly then remembers hearing how Min Matrone stated previously that she kept her savings under her mattress. Pauly ends up breaking into Min Matrone's home in order to rob her life savings. However, he is caught seconds later by Min herself. Pauly tries to make up a half-baked excuse for being in her bedroom and looking under her bed, but Min threatens to contact law enforcement. Pauly does not succeed at calming Min down and ends up taking her out by smothering her with a pillow. Pauly then heads back to Tony with a huge envelope of money as a way of trying to win back Tony's trust and admiration. This scene is extremely powerful and effective at showing us yet again how evil these men truly are. Although Pauly is a source of comedic relief from time to time throughout the series, these scenes remind us over and over again that these men are not who we feel they are, they are what they do. In another scene, Tony and Johnny meet with Carmine in his new restaurant. John and Tony want to reach a compromise on the HUD scam deal. Tony quickly becomes upset when Carmine refuses to appear at the meeting. Later, Tony gives three low-level soldiers orders to destroy the restaurant. As retaliation for this disrespect, Carmine ends up shutting down the Esplanade site entirely by having his union connections step in. This move ends up freezing a large source of income for both the New York and New Jersey families. As Carmine continues to lose money, Johnny loses faith in him as a leader and sets up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Tony. At the meeting, Johnny shares with Tony that he plans on having Carmine taken out due to him taking business matters personally rather than focusing on the money. In the end, we see despite Carmela feeling sad since Furio's departure and having a negative attitude, she and Meadow meet for their annual dinner at the Plaza Hotel. Here they dine in front of the Eloise portrait. However, their encounter is ruined and they both leave the dinner upset. Meadow chats with AJ and inquires about their mom's sudden mood change. During this conversation, Meadow learns that Carmela was frequently visiting Furio's home before he left. Afterward, Meadow learns about Tony attending therapy 
for the first time. Meadow then speaks to Tony and asks if Carmella has been acting unusually sad lately. Tony is of course not aware of what was going on between Carmella and Furio. Tony assumes Carmella's sudden mood change is a result of menopause and reassures Meadow that her mother still cares for her even though she may be a bit sadly. Meadow chooses to keep Carmella's frequent visits to Furio's house a secret while acting like she accepts Tony's suggestion that her mood is a direct result of menopause. That same night, Tony goes to bed and urges Carmella to be proud of the successful businesswoman she is now. We see Carmella does not really care what Tony has to say anymore and merely nods in acceptance and agrees with everything Tony has to say. That was episode number 51, titled Eloise. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this summary, consider clicking like. It goes a long way toward helping me grow this channel. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'll see you on the next episode. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.